This is a chimera. The chimera is a Greek mythical beast with the body of a lion, a snake for a tail, and a goat's head on its back for some reason. In Greek mythology, it's sibling to Cerberus and the Hydra. The word has come to mean, in modern terms, pretty much any creature that's a combination of other animals. These are chimeras. They just have an extra A in the name. Chimeras are a class of fish that live deep underwater. They're related to rays and sharks, and they're perfect to learn about for spoopy month because they're also called spookfish and ghost sharks. Like sharks and rays, their bones are made completely out of cartilage, and like rays, they have a long whip-like tail. That snake-like tail might be part of why they're called chimeras, like the snake tail on the Greek chimera. There are three types of ghost sharks, and they're all distinguished by their snoot. There are long-nosed, plow-nosed, and short-nosed chimeras. But all of their snoots are used for sensing electric signals. Even with their massive eyes, there's not much light to be seen at around a thousand meters below the ocean surface where they live. So to make up for that, they have electroreceptors in their snouts, and that helps them with navigation, finding food, and avoiding predators. These electroreceptors are called ampullae of Lorenzini, which I think I fought that guy in D&D once. As you guys turn the corner, you see the back of a man in a large cloak. He slowly turns. His skin is pale and he bares his fangs. <laughs> you recognize him. Ampule of Lorenzini, level 10 vampire wizard. Roll initiative. Oh, oh man. man. Nat 20. They're ampule of Lorenzini, help them avoid predators, but most chimeroids also have a venomous spine in their dorsal fin to help protect themselves from predator attacks. As I say, I have probably touched and fondled more ghost sharks than anyone on the planet. <laughs> That's Dr. Dominique Didier. She studied ghost sharks for just over three decades. She knows to watch for the spines. In fact, she has <clears throat> personally observed them. In undergrad, she became interested in ghost sharks when she saw that there wasn't much research on them. To find, you know, current work was I was delving into work that was published in the early 1900s and I realized, wow, there's like nothing known about these fish. No one is studying them. And over the last 28 years, she's helped discover 11 new species of ghost sharks, which is pretty amazing when you realize that it's actually 12 she just found another one. We're coming to the conclusion that what we thought was this one global species, Hari Hariota raleana, is probably not. Hariota avia, or the Australian narrow-nosed spookfish, used to be considered as the same thing as Hariota raleana. Then this year, a paper that Dr. Didier helped work on discovered that some of the populations near New Zealand and Australia are actually their own unique species. But how do you tell one species from another? There are two main ways that the researchers were able to prove that this is a new distinct species. The first is taking detailed measurements known as morphometrics. For each specimen, the researchers collected 64 different morphometric measurements. 64 different morphometric measurements. 64 different measurements of different bar different parts of the body. For each specimen, the researchers took 64 different measurements of the morphometrics. I get just piles of fish, I'll go to a museum and just measure all day long, measuring and measuring and measuring. You know, we use different things like calipers or forceps, um, tape measures if it's really big because there's just no device that can capture the whole size. But but yeah, that's what we do. And then write it down, put it in our spreadsheets and analyze it. Genetic analysis also played a role in identifying the new species. Now we have a lot more evidence partly because we can do molecular studies to say this is probably something new. This figure from the study maps some of the genetic mutations between individual specimens, and you can clearly see that the Hariota avia specimens are very different from the rest of the Hariota specimens collected. Given the morphological and genetic data, the team was able to confidently declare the new species. When a new species is declared, a few things generally happen. Most importantly, something needs to describe the new species. That's usually a scientific paper. And in this case, it's obviously that 2024 Finucci et al. paper that I've been talking about. It provides morphometrics and a physical description, and that ends up documenting the unique traits of this new species. Next, a holotype and paratypes need to be defined. A holotype is the definitive, name-bearing representative of the species. In other words, this is what peak Hariota avia performance looks like. His name is nmnzp.061676. Isn't that cute? 
That's a specimen identifier for the Museum of New Zealand Te Papatonga Rewa, and that helps other researchers identify the physical thing in the museum's catalogue. The paratypes are basically alternates or supplemental to the holotype. They help provide a more complete picture of a species definition, and they might end up replacing the holotype if that ever gets lost or damaged. Before I let you go, I need to ask one more question. What's your favorite thing about these weird little guys, about ghost sharks? Oh my gosh, there's so much to love about them. I just think they're like cool to look at. And then the more I learned about them and studied them, I mean, they just have, um, they're, they're ancient. So looking at their anatomy can give us clues to the evolution of vertebrates, which some people are doing. They're weird looking. They have these strange snouts and sensory systems. We don't, we still know very little about their reproduction, where the little guys are. And so that even now, after working with them for these decades, there's still like tons of stuff to be done. So that's what I guess. So that's why I like them. I get excited about, you know, all this neat stuff. Is there anything else you want to share for the end of the video? Coming up on October 30th is National Ghost Shark Day. So break out your ghost shark juju and have a great day. <laughs> And they should be on the lookout for the Ghost Sharks of the World, um, our upcoming book. Thank you so much to Dr. Didier for helping out. Check out the link in the description to see all the references and citations, and follow for more cool science.